someone gave the money someone gave the technology someone gave the planning someone gave the logistics is it one or more countries all this and more as we try to explain to you all the fast moving developments today hamas cannot pull this such a big thing hamas ki okat nahi hamas cannot pull this the way it was done the sophistication involved the weaponry involved the control command coordination coordination project management one after one the element of surprise the element of keeping it under the wraps do you think jihadis of hamas can do it no let me break one important thing to all our viewers you know who were these terrorists who carried the uh, attack first of all these jihadis and terrorists were they identified in last 20 years in israeli strikes or wherever which house got the maximum casualties vis a vis deaths or you know wherever now they i made a list of these houses and they got their boys so they already had a hatred for you know jews they had a hatred for israel so they recruited the most of them 99% of them are fresh blood they were fresh recruits 16 21 22 we were taught to kill rape even rape children he says even rape not women rape children now there was even an uh, what i call a smoke screen wherein there were some weapons were tried to be smuggled from west bank into uh, you know uh, into israel now when and suddenly the mossad was busy there it was a smoke screen where in jordan west bank then some weapons into hamas they tried to create a smoke screen don't tell me hamas can create this no so there was somebody who was guiding hamas to do right that's point number 2 point number 3 beheading of the children happened pm of uh, prime minister's office of israel confirms it mr joe biden gave a statement where he confirmed beheading of children they were carrying isis flags isis flags when they were doing all this they were sailing their support to isis so was it a mixed carder where some fighters borrowed from isis these did have is there a isis hand yes there is isis hand uh, you know how why should israel punish the palestini public are bhaiya these recruits came from the public where did these recruits come they came from the public and israel has a strategy like this is a building standing right here they will put the missile here here and here what will happen the whole building will collapse why why are they collapsing the buildings because they know beneath this building beneath that mosque beneath that uh, first of all these buildings are owned by our hamas terrorists and their leaders beyond it is a network of tunnels when the building falls the network of tunnels automatically gets crushed and crumbled so the network of tunnels gets crushed and crumbled a lot of these people have been anticipating this and there is going to be a big big surprise when israel enters gaza this is what my source tell me because hamas has banked this and you will see one more thing she said with a lot of these bombings you won't see a lot of people getting killed if you see the devastation if you see 2000 attacks by israel air force and if you look at the number of casualties itna sa hai you know hardly minuscule why this is happening because people have been evacuated they have built bunkers so they have been preparing for this and they knew that israel will do the ground offensive so they have prepared for it now there is this uh, jihadi called halai al alali he has a uh, is i forget the name of his uh, militia i tweeted that Uh, now he has 500000 fighters he landed two days back in lebanon so we have we are talking of 100000 men of hezbollah now we are talking 500000 men of his chelaka 6 lakhs now we are talking of fotis they are also armed around 100 200 came in then we are talking of other uh, there are other kurd force and others who are also said we will fight for uh, we will fight for hamas and hezbollah Now Hezbollah has already started the barrage of rockets which are landing on Israel. Now we have friends hating up from Lebanon. We have Syria coming in, and and if I look at what did the President Donald Trump said day for yesterday, he said that you know we are at the cusp of a World War Three and this time it's it might be nuclear. So things are changing at a very rapid pace. Except UAE and uh, Bahrain, all Islamic countries. Are supporting terrorist Hamas and all Christian countries, and we as a Hindu country are supporting Israel. The world is into two parts. We as Indians, me as Indian, and you know, million and a billion more than a billion of us, we stand with Israel. You know, to tooth and nail, to the last breath, we stand with Israel. We oppose this terror. She said, "The the fact remains, we are facing the same terror from our neighbors. They are as brutal as these guys. Nothing has changed in the last fourteen hundred years." the brutality the quantum of brutality has not changed it exactly stands there the same concepts of you know islamic terror and islamic jihad are even being used today what world has woken up to the reality is that i mean 
centuries can pass by, but the mindset cannot change. Benjamin Netanyahu said one important thing. Anybody who is supporting, funding, or giving safe heavens to Hamas or its leaders or its terrorists is a terrorist or is a, ter is a supporter of Hamas. So they are directly hinting at Lebanon. They are directly hinting at Qatar. So Pakistani hand, Iran is there. Irani footprint is there. Who was coordinating? Who was training? Where did the arms come from? Where did this happen? That is Iran. Now, second Qatar. Qatar, you know, where is Ismail Haniya? He's in Qatar. Who is funding these terrorists? Qatar. Who has given money to them? Qatar. And who is threatening? Important point, which has not come in the media, you will come to know in some time. Qatar has been calling European Union and has been trying to threaten them. Okay, look. If you meddle too much with and you help this too much Israel, Israel, we will cut off your gas. After Qatar, let's move to Turkey. Now, when we talk of Turkey, Erdogan has already started crying foul. Bhaiya, kya ho gaya? Peace, peace, peace. What peace, Erdogan? What peace? You want to save Hamas? You want to save this territory so that they can come next time? Sir, Sadat's involvement is very, very clear. Arms corridor, arms corridor, facilitation and smuggling of arms was facilitated by Turkey. It's very, very clear. There's enough evidence now out in the open media. And Erdogan's support is there. But Erdogan is confined by, you know, this, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Erdogan is confined because he's a part of NATO. He cannot, he cannot come out in the open. And Bilal Erdogan has supported and funded all the propaganda against India on Kashmir. He has supported JNU. He has supported Tugre Tugre Gang. He has done anything within his reach, within his Aukar to dismantle or to destabilize India. That is Bilal Erdogan for you. So here is Sadat. Here is Bilal which is the main player behind the scenes. People's Republic of China. I have been telling, sir, ki isme China, ka haat hai. China is involved. I have been I, telling to educate people. I have been trying, shouting my lungs out, Red Jihad, where Reds will do the funding and these Pukras and these useless countries, Islamic countries, who are bankrupt, will do the dirty work. The rockets used by Hamas. You know where are they made, sir? Lingliang Steel Factory. It's in Shandong province of China. So China's hand is there. That is the first proof. The hand gliders and the pankha. Again, Chinese PLA has demonstrated this. There are factories in China. I have also given you the website. It's on my Twitter handle also, the website where you can get this. You can go to the website and find exactly what which has been used there. When Benjamin Netanyahu went to China or Chinese premier came to Israel, I was, I was warning that day, uh, Mr. Netanyahu, don't play with the fire. These people cannot be trusted by anybody. They don't even trust their own kind. How can you trust them? So China's hand is very, very, very clear. Iran is involved. China is involved. Pakistan is involved. We are talking of Turkey. We are talking of Qatar. A new excess of evil, wherein China is the kind of a power backing them. Now what we have Pakistan, bankrupt country. Gone. Lebanon, bankrupt. Lebanon's 80% of the people live in below the poverty line. Below the poverty line, 80% of the janta. You're the second highest inflation in Lebanon. Number one is Erdogan. Again, same. same. Erdogan bankrupt. China, uh, this Turkey bankrupt. Lebanon bankrupt. North Korea, we all know. China's economy, how fragile it is, all know. Pakistan, though, what do I tell you? You know it better than me. So all these bikharis who are desperate for money, who have no money, is funded by China to cause havoc. Why, does, why would China do it? China wants to destabilize the IMAP. Why the world agencies could not track it? I told you that date will not be tracked if it is in North Korea or China. These are the two countries where the lot of agencies are opaque, especially North Korea. Now, if you join the links, you can see that North Korea and China, how are they involved? Why the world agencies could not track them? Also, there is one other interesting development that has happened. The Grand Imam Council, this is a body of Shia scholars. They have also come out in support of Israel. This is a responsible body. Imam Tawhidi, you may know this person. He settled in Australia, a good friend of mine. And he, he has actually written a letter of about 50 Imams. This is also out in the internet. They have all said what Hamas did was wrong. I, I, I had met Tawhidi in 2019. Here is my picture with him. Uh, you, I can tell you, I'm sitting to his right, uh, Dr. Subramaniam Swami to his left, and the other is uh, my good friend Anurag Saxena. So we, this was a, a event, Arth. Uh, it was in uh, New Delhi in February 2019. Uh, so it's about four years old. This is the statement, GIC Governing Board. 
1470 Muslim Imams and scholars from all Islamic denominations and sects. It's an Islamic seminary of Najaf, Iraq. So Iraq is also trying to change its stance a little bit. At least, you know, this group has said that we don't stand with Hamas. We all know this. What changed Middle East? There is one person who has changed and who should be held responsible, which no media is talking or no media dares to talk except us, who is held responsible. Who is the real villain? Villain Kone. I've told you all the countries. They're not the villain. There's a, there was a gentleman in the name of Barack Hussein Obama. Now, you will tell me what has Obama got to do with this? Why are you getting Obama into this? I'll tell you what Obama has got to do. He made China the biggest Frankenstein of the United States of America. That is Obama's creation, we all know. Before Obama, there was a cap on Iranian oil production and exports. It, I think it was 3.5 lakh barrels, Sade 3 lakh barrel per day. Obama came and he became very liberal. Barack Hussein Obama, Purana. He became very liberal with it. He said, no, 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 no. Well, I'm pulling up all these restrictions. We will $4 billion of foreign exchange reserve. So that was what Iran has left. By this time, Iran would be eating sand, literally sand. What did Obama do? He opened the doors. Barack Hussein Obama, in his tenure, cultivated two Frankensteins. One is China and one is Iran. And who is on the list here? Iran be a China be a Dono. Hai. Lebanon, remember, was the only Christian dominated country in the Middle East. Last 40 years, Lebanon is changed into Arab Muslim. So they have converted Lebanon into Islam into 40 years. 40 years, sub -khatam. no more Christian. Even Christians are fearing for their lives. And I have some source based information. Whatever Hamas tried, so Friday call for mobilization where we are telling all the Arab countries, we are telling all the militias to invade Israel and to do some similar kind of activities. You know our borders on the highest island. This is a model which is being tried to invade, to invade the smaller countries. Because if you can do it in Israel, you can do it in so many European countries, you can do it in so many provinces and states elsewhere. So this is a model which has been manifested by some of the smartest cooked brains in the world. Remember, the Chinese virus came from China and the Hamas virus is again being facilitated from China. China is involved in, listen, Iran is involved. And who is the main villain? Who cultivated Iran? Who cultivated China? And you know, there was a, even a game, there was even a car bomb planted on an Israeli diplomat in Delhi. And you know, there was an Iranian hand in it. This Friday is going to be something to watch about and to be very, very careful. Of. And do you think these Islamic terrorists are going to stop? No. Even if you hit them, you whack Hamas, and new Hamas will come up, and new breed of terrorists will come up. And this time, the patience of the world has run out. Patience of the world has completely run out with Islamic terror. Obama forgot one thing. Obama forgot one thing, the deep state. If you talk of Rockefellers, if you talk of Rothschild, if you talk of Larry Page, if you talk of all these, they're all Jews. And you cannot slaughter Jews like sheep. If you slaughter Jews like sheep, there is going to be a bigger, bigger retaliation. Guys, history has a villain. The villain is Barack Hussein Obama. In this game of sales tree, sir, if we pull up Iran, we pull up China, there's no money. Hamas and Hezbollah have existed and they will they would have you know gone and uh, fired at a couple of guys, did a car bomb, what they have been doing. Israel knows how to handle it. But who is putting this big bogey on uh, on you know Israel now? And let me tell you, Iran has a substantial firepower. Iran has a lot of weapons and a lot of weaponry, sir. I'm telling you with a lot of conviction at my command from China and North Korea has moved to Iran. You wait and watch. You will find North Korean weapons. You will find Chinese imprint on Iranian weapons. And now Obama is giving statements. Oh, uh, we condemn. Where is my... Aray, bhaiya, you created Iran. You created China. What the hell are you going to condemn? To do what? You did what you were supposed to do. You really have screwed the world and the American interest. In India, watch what is happening. The ambassador of Palestine wants to address a meeting in Kerala and the MEA has given permission to him. Guys, you have to draw a line somewhere. Who is the ambassador of Palestine and why does he want to Nobody. go to Kerala? Nobody. ICC should have condemned any idiot who is saying we are with Hamas. You are down in India to play the game. Keep your personal comments to yourself. Keep your mouth shut. Play the game and go. There is one Pakistani commentator who had to go out, who was asked to leave in a hurry. And people are not telling the real truth. She was trying to honey trap a cricketer. Correct, sir. 
the cricketer himself complained that he is yeah. trying to any trophy. Americans will not send two aircraft carrier, you know, these combined battle groups for Hamas. Come on, somebody thinks it's for Hamas. It is not for Hamas. And this Iran and Hezbollah are itching, sir. I'm telling you, they're itching to join in. And if they join in, the, then there's no control. I mean, it, it might be a radioactive desert for till eternity. Forget a man. They're not even a speck of grass can grow there. Palestine has to pay the price. You know, unfortunately, females are not commodities. They might be in some religions, but not in the civilized world of today. They are not commodities. Understand that. Children are not supposed to be burned alive. You cannot decapitate. You cannot burn kids alive. You cannot burn toddlers alive. You cannot cut the warp of a lady and leave the child out and cut the umbilical cord and want both to die a slow death. What kind of a barbarism are we talking?